For more on this story, we're joined in Ellisburg, Washington, by former SeaWorld trainer, Dr. Jeffrey Venture. He was a killer whale trainer for four years at SeaWorld. He's now an outspoken critic of keeping whales in captivity. He's also a doctor in Washington State. Jeffrey, when you saw this video for the first time, how surprised were you, if, if at all, by, by what exactly happened, given what you know? Well, the, uh, watching it visually is a lot different from reading about it. I had read about it as a part of the OSHA versus Cyril hearings in Sanford last year. It talked about this case a lot, and that's one of the reasons why Judge Welsh the federal judge determined that SeaWorld had committed a serious violation in regard to safety. But when you see it, uh, you just think that Ken Peters is lucky to be alive, and you can see the fear in his eyes as he, number one, scrambled off that slide-out area, and number two, while he was waiting to see what Kasatka was going to do. You know, she did take him down a second time, and it's amazing that he was able to hold his breath for that long. Uh, what might have provoked this? I, it's, not, it's hard to say, but apparently her baby was in the back. Uh, you might imagine as a mother uh, with a crying baby, uh, having to perform a public uh, show in a, in a concrete pool might not be the first thing on your mind when you hear your baby cry out. Apparently she wanted to get back with her baby and sent a very clear message to Ken Peters. Uh, in terms of the trainer himself, I mean, how do you think he handled the situation? I mean, you have a certain amount of expertise in this field. Yeah, absolutely. He handled it just the way we were all trained to handle it. If you go back to 2004, Steve Abel handled the whale Kai in the same fashion. He petted him and the animal eventually calmed down. The same thing happened with Ken Peters. If you watch the famous Connell video and when Don Branshaw was tragically killed in 2010, she was remaining calm right before uh, she was pulled into the water. So she applied the same method and in her case, it didn't work. Uh, the safety of trainers has been a hot-button issue since Orca trainer Don Branchot was killed in 2010. So do you think humans uh, should even be in the waters with these animals? Well, now we've had, like, uh, Alexis Martinez was killed in Spain just 60 days before Don by another whale named Tito. Ken Peters was pulled in by Kasatka. The animal orchid has been banished from waterworks. Uh, Tilikum famously killed Don, and he killed two other people. All I can say is that SeaWorld, SeaWorld says they can predict behavior 98% of the time. But what happens when you're part of that 2% like Don and, Pete, and uh, Alexis Martinez and Ken Peters and Steve Abel? It's really lucky that two of those guys are still alive and now four people have died just because these are smart, free-ranging animals that sometimes go off behavior and when they do, uh, the trainers are at the whale's mercy. So if SeaWorld fights and earns the opportunity to put trainers back in the water again, it's probably just going to be a matter of time before another serious event occurs, and then next time it's going to be on them. Right, because you know, every time I hear a story like this, it makes me question whether these animals should even be in captivity at all, uh, given not only what it does to the animals themselves, but also the fact that there are fatalities. You know, we, we have some photos of your time at SeaWorld. Uh, you worked with uh, Tilikum, the orca that killed. Don Brasho. What is your take on that whole issue? Well, I mean, uh, I've had a, a changing of my ways. Uh, when I went out to the San Juan Islands in, in Canada to see the northern and the southern residents and back in 1996, I was blown away. Most of the trainers that worked at SeaWorld, in fact, all of the trainers that I knew and still know to this day, have never seen a wild killer whale. So we all thought that this was what wild killer whales were the time you see at Chandler Stadium, but that's not the case at all. In the wild, they swim 100 miles a day. They have straight dorsal fins, not collapsed fins like you see in the wild. Uh, 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 males stay with their mothers their entire life in the resident communities here, and they have very strong nuclear families. In captivity, these animals are shipped from park to park just to uh, fill their pools, and th this creates social strife. It leads to them breaking their teeth on the steel gates that separate them, doing something called jaw popping, and then the vets have to drill out their teeth. And this is all talked about in a book by David Kirby that was just released this week called Death at SeaWorld. And I think up in Canada, you guys should read this stuff. It's got the whole history of wild killer whales and those in captivity, and it's a great book. But and Jeffrey, a lot of the research on the book, well, uh, well, I just, the book went on in Canada. I'm sorry. I'm just curious. I mean, what do you say to the argument that if it if 
uh, if it wasn't for SeaWorld, if it wasn't for uh, these uh, whales being uh, how, kept in cap captivity, uh, people wouldn't necessarily have an appreciation about them, wouldn't know about them. I, I think that was a valid argument in 1965. Mm. In 1965, we now know just about everything we can know about these animals from captivity, and this has been the case for a long time. The only research that occurs at SeaWorld is research into how to keep these whales alive in captivity. None of the research that they're doing there has to do with the salmon populations in the Pacific Northwest, the whales that we care about out here, or in any other parts of the world. It's all about uh, artificial insemination and has nothing to do with true ecology. Um, so these days, I think it's better to go to a place like Washington State or BC, Canada, and check out the northern and the southern uh, resident animals. I was just there this week uh, with Dr. Ingrid Bissert from New Zealand, and it was a really great event. We saw these animals foraging for salmon and uh, jumping out of the water, and it was free. All we had to do was get on a boat. You know, a, a trip to SeaWorld cost an adult $81 in Orlando a piece. You know, you can go to Lime Kiln Lighthouse in Washington State for free or stand on the beach of British Columbia for free and watch killer whales swim by. A lot of people are kayaking with these animals now. So there are cheaper and easier alternatives than flying your family of four to San Diego, San Antonio, or Orlando, Florida and spending a thousand dollars doing that when you can have the real thing uh, in nature. Dr. Jeffrey Venture, former SeaWorld trainer, <laughs> coming to us. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you and uh, enjoy talking to you.